Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to focus on the clutch assembly. Uh, and then once we go through the clutch assembly, check all the clutch plates and the pressure plates um, and the springs, uh, then we're going to clean up the, um, the clutch cover and all of that and then get it all back together and back on the engine again. So uh, when you first take the clutch assembly out, which you can see that in my previous videos where uh, when you take these bolts out, they're spring loaded because there are springs underneath here. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm just going to start at this point where it's already off the bike and the bolts are out. So, uh, you first start off by checking the, uh, the springs and the shop manual has all of the service specs here for the uh, for the clutch plates and the clutch uh, for the, the actual clutch plate the uh, discs and then the the plates that go in between each one of the discs and then they also have service limits for the springs so the service limit on the springs is 1.32 inches and I've checked these already and they are all within specs. I, I really believe that the clutch, the clutches and the springs and everything have been replaced on this bike in the past. And I don't know if you can really see it very well, but I mean, I'm almost at 1.4 right there. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm almost at 1.4 on just about every single one of these. And a, and a couple of them, they're over 1.4. So that's well within the service limits. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse these springs because I don't believe that they're that old. And one thing about clutches is that, that they're pretty easy to replace once the bike is back together and running. So if you feel like you have to replace them, then so be it. it it's relatively easy. So uh, anyway, as I say, I've already checked all of these springs, so they're all good to go. And then when you, when you go to, to take this apart, it's real easy because everything is just kind of laying in place. Get these out of the way. So really, all you do is just lift it right out of there. And this, this has not been cleaned yet, which obviously I have to do. So um, anyway, this is all in really good shape. Uh, I'll clean this up, and I'll use a little Scotch-Brite on this to get, the, get some of the crud off of there. And uh, this will be good to go. So it starts off, you know, where you have an actual clutch plate or clutch disc, then you've got a, a, a plate and then another disc and another plate and so on and so forth all the way down. So again, I've checked the first couple of clutch discs already. And again, all the discs so far that I've checked are all within specs. But again, I'll show you this one I've already cleaned up a little bit. And the one thing you want to look for on the clutch discs is any kind of score marks or anything. But this disc looks really good. There aren't any score marks at all. The, uh, the surface is still in really good condition. So again, I, I don't think it was very long ago, prior to the bike being parked, that these discs were replaced. And again, the, uh, the clutch plate is in pretty good condition too. And you wanna check for warpage. And again, I've laid this down on a flat surface and I've checked for warpage and there is none. So uh, again, I don't think that these are really I don't think they really have that many miles on them. So 
So again, you look on the service manual and it gives you uh, the, uh, the surface limits on both the clutch disc and the plate. And on the clutch disc, it's uh, 0.12 inches or 3.1 millimeter. Now, my micrometer is inches only, so, um, so I have to go by 0.12 inches. Now again, I've checked this disc already. And when I do this, we are at 1.3 and a half. I believe it is 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 1.3 and a half. So again, that's well within service limit. And on the disc or the uh, plate, you're looking at 0 0.01 inches. So when I check that, we are at a lot higher than that. So these are well within spec. So one thing I want to point out that's pretty important is that the lifter plate has different bolts in the different locations. So um, basically you've got two longer bolts with collars on them and then you have four uh, shorter bolts. Now if you'll notice on the, on the lifter plate, um, they've got these circles on them right here. There's one there and one on the opposite end right there. So uh, the two bolts with the longer bolts with the collars on them go here and here where those circles are. Then if you look on the clutch basket, the hole right there has the threads are down are, are deep inset. They're sunk down in there and all the rest of them, the threads start right away. So the two bolts with the collars on them go here and here. And again, the lifter plate goes on there like that. So you've got your circle, circle, collar, collar. And then so your bolt with the collar on it goes there and so on. So you start out by putting in your springs. Then position your lifter plate where the circles are again. Using the bolt with the collar. Then you tighten them, you go around evenly. Because what you're doing is you are suppressing the springs as you tighten it. And then just give them 
once they uh, bottom out, then you just kind of give them a little tug all the way around. So now we're going to prepare the area where the clutch basket goes. Uh, and before you install the clutch basket, you have to install the oil pump um, chain drive and sprockets. So the drive sprocket goes into the, uh, into the oil pump here. And that, that tab right there goes into the slot into, in the oil pump. So the, uh, uh, the engine or the transmission turns the sprocket, which then turns the chain to, to, the, uh, to the oil pump sprocket, which is what activates the pump. So, and then this sprocket goes on the primary shaft like that. So I will assemble this and you'll see how it goes together. So there we go. So the small sprocket is in the oil pump and it's in the slot. And so when you turn that, then it turns the oil pump. So now the clutch basket will, will go on to the primary shaft there. And then that nut will hold it on and we'll deal with that later on. So now I'm ready to install the clutch basket. And so while you're installing this, you have to line up these tabs with the holes in the uh, sprocket here and line up the teeth with the primary shaft here. So it's uh, a little tricky, but you just have to kind of be careful. Now, if you'll notice, I took the lift plate off because when I showed you how to install the lift plate earlier, uh, I did it off the bike to make it a little clearer as to uh, emphasize the which bolts go where on this lift plate. But actually, when you install the clutch basket, you have to install it without the lift plate on there. So uh, 
once you get the basket on there, you have to put the, uh, the spanner nut on there and torque it down to uh, 37 to 40 pounds. So I always torque it at about 38. And there's a special spanner socket for the CBX clutch basket. And that's what this is here. So uh, if you don't have one of these, it's really, really important that you have that. So the shop manual says to torque this at 33 to 40 pounds. So I'm going to do it at about 38. Like I said, I like doing it about halfway, maybe a little more. That way, if you over tighten it, not a big deal. If you under tighten it, not a big deal. And by the way, you want to have the transmission in first gear when you do this. And even then, it's a little, a little hard to, because it tends to want to turn. So if you've got the engine on the bench or on an engine stand or whatever, in order to stop the clutch basket from turning to get your 40 pounds of torque, I put a, a vice grip on the, uh, the um, you know, the chain, the front sprocket, where the front sprocket goes. And so now that's lodged up against the, the lift here. And now I can turn this and get my 40 pounds torque spec. Otherwise, if the engine is on the bike, then you have to put your foot on the rear brake and put it in first gear and then torque it that way. But if the engine's on the, on the uh, stand or on the, on the bench or whatever, then you've got to do it like I just showed you. So it keeps wanting to turn on you, but, you know, if you just keep at it, eventually you'll get it. And I've got it right here, so. And there's the click. Now I'm in installing the release bearing and the lifter guide. And the lifter guide is just this kind of shaft that goes just lays in there like that. Put a little oil on there. Thank you. 
So that's going to do it for this video. Tomorrow I'm going to come and I'm going to clean up the valve cover and the clutch cover and a couple of the engine covers uh, and get them ready to install on the engine. And then we're going to be pretty close to being complete. I've ordered a couple of parts for the alternator. So I will install the alternator um, as soon as I get those parts and I'll go through the assembly on that. But uh, anyway, stay tuned for the next video, which I will be installing all the rest of the engine covers. And then the engine is going to start looking complete. So um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the subscribers. And uh, uh, thank you for helping support the channel. And please uh, like and share and uh, hit the uh, subscribe button if you have not subscribed. Uh, I've got a lot of great videos coming on a lot of different bikes. So uh, again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.